Hi guys, welcome back to Let's Play World of Warcraft with Andy. Uh, today we are going to set out on our quest for Ungoro Crater, so pretty exciting. Uh, it should be neat to see all of the dinosaurs and stuff, so from Gadgetzan, uh, it's pretty simple to get there. We're basically just going to walk for this lower, um, sort of lower west corner, southwest I guess low west, whatever you want to call it, but the western edge of Tanneris is all uh, up against the cliffs of Ungoro Crater. Now, it is technically possible to... oh, that's a cool... that's a cool snake. It is technically possible to get into Ungoro Crater from pretty much anywhere along that edge, but uh, I'll run over to it here and show you. It's not exactly safe. Uh, basically, if you were to jump straight down, you'll probably die. Unless you have, um, like a priest or a mage. If you're a priest or a mage, you should be able to levitate yourself or slow fall yourself. And, uh, you can just sort of fall down into the, into the crater. A-OK. -okay. Um, don't think that will work for us, though. Since monks... At least to my knowledge, do not have some sort of a slow fall ability. We won't be able to do that. Um, also, if you're an engineer, engineers have that type of thing. But here, here is the edge of Ungoro Crater, and it is a very large crater. Big trees, very swampy, uh, in contrast to the desert out here. And we definitely don't want to try to just jump right down. As cool as that would be, we would not last very long. And it would kind of disrupt our questing, since when we go in the entry area, the entry sort of pathway, there are some quests there and such, and um, we want to get those. So if we just jump down, we won't, uh, we won't have them. So, as it is, we're going to walk down towards this southern section, and there should be a pair of big obelisks, these uh, black tower things. You can just see one on the edge of that hill there, but let me, uh, let me get a little closer and we should be able to see it better. There is one obelisk, like, directly ahead of us right now. And I think there's another one around somewhere. Maybe it's just one obelisk. Oh, nope, there's the, uh, there's the second one. So over in this cactus area, there are some other quests and things if you want to keep questing in Tanneris. Otherwise, uh, we will just check and make sure there aren't any quests that take us down into Ungoro Crater. And then we will go, uh, go see what is going on down here. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any quests, so we'll just head down the pathway. But there's this nice pre-made pathway, and you know it's easy enough to easy enough to get down here. So, if memory serves, I think Ungoro Crater is actually a Titan creation, um, similar to Sholazar Basin in Wrath of the Lich King. Um, or Northrend, if you want the continent name. In uh, in Northrend, there's an area called Sholazar Basin. It's a giant circular uh, depression in the ground, very similar to this, that's also swampy and sort of humid and has lots of big creatures and stuff. So what there we go. Here? And that's a Velociraptor over there. We'll also talk to Garl get Stormclaw. Down, get going. But, uh, I'm pretty sure around the edge there's these, like, four totem things. I think they are similar to the giant pillars, and I want to take on this guy. Hey, Rabasaur. I think we need to kill them in order to get some white Rabasaur claws. But the pillars in Northrend keep back the snow. In this case, I think they just keep the climate kind of contained and uh, primordial soupy rather than 
drying out like Tannerus next to it. Considering it's right between two deserts, uh, Silithus and Tannerus, and right above a third in Hold'em, I have a feeling that it's not exactly the most, well, natural of uh, occurrences. On the other hand, it is a giant hole in the ground, so it's entirely possible there's some, you know, weird weather. Lore-wise, obviously, there isn't actually, like, weather programmed into the game that controls how humid certain areas are, although that would be uh, quite a feat. Pretty interesting if they were to do that. Alright. There's another white Ravasaur Claw. You know, I think I'm gonna go in and just adjust our system volume. Let's see. Sound... It's currently at 31%. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. Try to make sure that uh, our sound effects aren't too overpowering. Just because they can sometimes... I guess they sound a little loud to me. And when I rewatch the videos, I want to make sure that my audio is correctly balanced against uh, the background noises. So if you guys find that you can't hear anything... Or, rather, if you can't hear a particular thing, whether that's me or if, if that's the uh, sound in the background in the game, and you want me to try to boost it up some more, uh, just let me know. I can, can work on doing that. Uh, let's see here. So we still need two more Ravasaur Claws, and then I'm pretty sure that we're going to need to get some thresher parts from, like, a dead thresher carcass pretty soon. So we'll have to look around for that. There we go. It's another one down, and that got us another piece. So the Threshodon carcass is back in the other direction. I guess we'll go get that. There we go. We'll fight this one and then we'll go uh, look around for that Threshodon. Oh. For a second I thought we had another one attacking us from the side. That would have been uh, less than ideal. These guys are quite, quite strong. They are only level 48, so fortunately we don't have too much difficulty taking them on, but... Uh, they're pretty dangerous, so... Alrighty, let's see. The Thresher Carcass should be around here somewhere. Ah! Here it is. I'm gonna just grab a chunk of that. And... Then let's go ahead and... Blast this guy. Oh! Looks like we have, uh... We have made two of them angry. Kill one with the killing... Killing touch or death touch, touch of death, yeah. But uh, the other one we'll have to take out using conventional means. Let's see here. I think we can get. Uh, oh no, never mind. Oh, hello, Ravasaur. This guy just walked right through the carcass. I didn't see him since he was hiding behind uh, dead Thresher for most of the time. Alright, let's try to kill him and then go turn these in. Alright, so we still need to go to Willidan Marshall at Marshall's stand. That should be sort of in the center there. We'll go check that out in a little bit here. Off in that direction. It certainly is hazy down here. There's sort of this greenish fog tinge to everything. I got a bad feeling. And a Alrighty. Friend is a friend of mine. White bone rod. We can probably not need that. A fist weapon. That's kind of cool. It is better than our current weapons. So I'll have to have to think about that one. Or a white bone circle. Now, this is better than. No, well, it's not even really that much better than our rings. I guess we could get this and... Hmm. 
Let's see what this looks like. This is a fist weapon? Oh, I see. It's on that fist. The other ones are. Okay. Yeah, we'll get this thing. Use Garl's net to obtain four blood petal seeds. Cool. Um, so we are going to try to equip this. And it looks like it is superior to... Well... The two that we have are kind of equivalent, more or less, but the mace has strength instead of agility. So I'm going to try to replace the mace. So there we go, we've got a, a fist weapon now. Turn this in, continue, complete, and yes. Obtain, obtain two Ravasaur pheromone glands. Ew, okay. That's probably going to be difficult. Not only do we have to slay these raptors, but then we have to... Oh, hey. More Vec of the Ravasaur Trainers. That's pretty cool. Uh, not only do we have to slay these guys, but then we have to dig out their glands. Okay, so we also need to keep an eye out for... What is that sound? Hearing something. Blood petal seed. Maybe I need to be on top of it? Hey, got it. That was pretty cool. I could barely see it, but I heard it, and I guess that's how you're supposed to find them. Now I know what they look like, though, so... Should be easier now. There's number two. We still need those glands, though. Here's number three. Got it. Alright. Let's see if we can't find number four. Pretty easily here, and then... Find some Ravasaurs that we can hunt for their pheromone glands. Hmm. Looks like these guys don't, uh, don't work. They're not the right kind. They're not the right kind of Ravasaurs. I wonder if those blood petal seeds are mostly in the water, or... What? Because they're supposed to be around here, but I'm not hearing or seeing any of them anymore. I guess we'll work our way back in this direction. Hope to find some of them along the way. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Perhaps in this pond? No. Well, shucks. Alright, let's see. Ravasaur pheromone gland. Hmm. Oh, I see. I see what we're supposed to do. Okay, this is the proper area for the Ravasaur pheromone glands. We just have to get close to these clutches of eggs, and then they come out attack us. Yeah, there we are. Alright, so now we can kill this kind and get, uh, get our intended pheromone gland. There we go. And then we can keep looking around in this area for, uh, the seeds. The seeds are still in here somewhere. We need to find them. So we will just... I guess hop back over towards this river. Here's another uh, clutch of eggs, so we should be able to summon another. There we go. I need to be closer. Great. Hit that guy, and we should be able to take these down pretty easily. I apologize if there's any uh, background noise or um, sound. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Oh goodness, it sounded like there might be some emergency vehicles outside, so I do apologize if there's any of that in the background of the recording. It's just stuff that I really can't do much about, um, the area that I'm living in, so. Alright, let's go ahead and grab that seed, and now we're good to go. We should be able to go turn these in and uh, see what is next in this quest. I have a feeling we're going to need to use these pheromone glands to lure out some super boss rabasaur, which will be uh, just just peachy, you know? That's a really, really good idea. Because the only thing better than a angry, dangerous dinosaur with a bunch of teeth is a big, big, very angry, dangerous story? one. Alright, lash your seeds, complete. Report to Ithis Moon Warden in the Roiling Gardens. Where on earth is that? Alright. We need to head north to that. Uh, that's kind of cool. This Blood Elf's riding like a crane. Let's see, what is this? Yeah, a regal riding crane. That's really neat. Alright, so Ravasaur Pheromone Gland, continue, continue, and using the contents of Torwa's pouch, summon Larkorwi and defeat him, then bring his head to Torwa. Alright. Cool. And it gets us a nice chest piece. I like this. Alright, so... Ah, I see. We need to head far north. Far, far north. So I guess we'll head up the north and uh, take care of meeting this elf in the garden, and uh, then we'll go take down a dinosaur. How bad could it be? How bad could it possibly be? I think we'll do fine. One thing that we need to look out for, though, are the devil sores. There's some big well, drastically larger, very angry and very powerful dinosaurs that roam around these parts of the woods. Pretty much this entire area, all over the place. They roam all over and they attack things and they're surprisingly good at sneaking up on you. Alright, complete quest, kill six packs of juvenile lashers. Alright, are these juvenile... Are these juvenile lashers, or are they... What are they? Oh no! Come on, things, die! That was close. So yeah, I guess those are those are packs of them. All right. Well, we will do that after. Well, we'll just try taking them down like this. There we go. Get him with the punch. That ought to do a good amount of damage to him. I am out of range. I think the key to this is trying to do AoE damage, and that's not something that we're really ideally suited for. But, there we go. She Burst should be able to make up for that a bit. It kind of damages all the guys that are around the one that we've hit, since they're sort of on the way to the enemy and it technically speaking hits all of the ones on the way to the enemy so you know it's not too bad and we should be able to cheap burst these guys there we go it's not too bad and let's uh, regen some energy and then we should be able to whirling crane kick these. Nice. 
so that's pretty good. They, uh, they died without too much trouble. It looks like we just need one more, one more panel. So we'll get them with the punches just to hold them for a second, and then we should be able to finish off a bunch of them with that. Oh, that surprisingly didn't, uh, didn't do very much to them. Like, it hit the one that we were actually targeting, but that's it. I'm honestly a little surprised that, uh, that didn't have more of an effect. Usually it hits all the guys. Oh well. We should be able to go over and summon up our friend the big velociraptor. So let's see here. Uh, pouch. Right click to open. And we've got preserved pheromone mixture and threshedon meat. So we'll place the threshedon meat on the rock. And then we'll apply the pheromone mixture. And there we go. Now, oh, oh that brought him out here quick. Alright. Hopefully this won't be too bad. We've killed worse things before. And killing blow. Nice. So we got his head. We should be able to take that back and complete our quest. We can also go back and turn in the uh, tiny plant things quest. Since we've got that one complete as well. And talk to Mr. Elf over here in the garden. Hey, Ithis Moon Warden. How are you? Alright, complete. And kill 11 blood pebbles. Any type of adult will do. Alright, well, we'll hang on to that. We can always do that as we go from place to place. And we just reached level 52. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Nothing, nothing new in an abilities, but, uh, at least it's better stats and, um, you know, one, one level closer to moving on to Outland, one level closer to 90. So all of that is good stuff. Moving along nicely. I'm very, uh, very interested to see in the next couple of weeks how stuff progresses with, um, the... What on earth is... Oh, it's a... It's a blood elf swimming. Here. Well, can we not... Oh, they're a blood elf. We can't buff... We can't buff them because we are on the alliance side. Blood elves are... Blood elves are evil. We can't... We can't help them out. So anyway, we will... Uh, well, they're not evil. They're just, uh, you know... Oh, well, they're kind of evil. But they're on the horde side, and that's what I meant. They're not on the alliance. Complete and complete. There we go. 15,000 on that. And we got ourselves a new chess piece, so we should be able to equip it. And that's pretty cool looking. So that's, that's very exciting. We're going to do uh, one thing real quick here. We're going to switch over to our Tundra Mammoth. Talk to the salesperson. He can repair our armor, which is nice. And then we can go ahead and sell all of this other stuff that we don't need. Hang on to the Mage Weave, because we'll probably try to do some, like, I don't know exactly what we'd use it for, maybe like first aid. Alright. He is a noisy guy, though, when we sell stuff to him. He is very noisy. Uh, okay. There we go. And that's that. So that's all of that stuff sorted out. Now we can proceed onwards. We do have our quest up there in the garden area to take out some blood petals, but for now, I think we'll head towards the center of the area. We want to see what's at this camp and see if we get some more quests in the same region. Because if there's uh, overlap in our quests, that's... Oh! Hello. Hello, Devil Soar. That is... That is one of them. They're very... Very intimidating. 16,000 health. I feel like maybe that's not that much. Like, maybe we could kill one. But it wouldn't be... 
wouldn't be the easiest thing ever. So, best not to try for now. They're quiet, too. They're so stealthy. You'd think something big like that would not sneak up on us. But they can, and they will. And then they'll eat ya. So, we always have to maintain constant vigilance. Alright, complete that quest, and we can get a new one. And get one from over here. Good day to you. You have a great Collect seven power crystals of each color. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we've got some quests on that, which is the volcano. There's a volcano here. Uh, and then we have our blood petal quest. So I guess we'll just give the volcano ones a shot for a little while. See what we can do in this area. We need to collect Ungoro Ash. And we need to find the hottest area of the Fire Plume Ridge. So, I guess we'll need to find a... Oh, hey camera, what are you doing? I guess we'll need to find a hot spot in order to monitor it. I bet the hottest spot is right up on top. That's usually where the best things are. I don't know what constitutes a hot spot, though. Maybe it'll be pretty clear. Oh, there's just a bag here. I, am out I think I recall the quests that that, uh, that bag is for. I'm not not certain, but uh, I think I know what the stuff in this area is for. I've done this quite a while ago, uh, but not, not so much recently. Alright. Let's try to take that guy down, good. And then I think this thing, this little like vent stack, this might be a hot spot. So let's try let's try getting over here and Fire Plume Ridge Hotspot. Yeah, is that not Okay. Apparently that's not what that is. Oh there's a there's a hot spot, but it's on the other side of all this lava. And Okay. I guess we'll just continue upwards. We'll probably find some more of those hot spots around. Worst case, we'll just go back down and get them down there. At least we're gathering our Undoro Ash while we explore this area. There we go. We got. Oh, a killing blow on a critter. That's not so useful. What's up here? Blaze Runner. Well, he looks like he's for a quest, so we'll leave him for now. And I guess we'll try to make our way back down and find find out how to get out there to measure those hot spots. Out. Oh, hey, hey, Elemental. You can you can not attack us. That's cool. Not attacking us would be fine too. There we go. I think I think we might be able to kind of kind of jump out there. Like, oh nope, we failed to failed the jump. All right. Well, at least here's a hot spot, so we can take a measurement. Temperature reading. Temperature is 9,280 degrees Cracklin height. That's hot. Alright. I guess that's not the hottest spot, though. Or maybe we need to measure all of them in order to figure out which one's the hottest. Ah, I see. I think they're all spaced out around the base, so you're not intended to necessarily have to go all the way up. Ding, 4,000... Oh, no, 428,000 degrees crackling height. Okay. I need to be closer. Ah, I guess that's the uh I guess that's the hottest spot. Now we know. I am out of I need to need to silence this guy. Hmm. 
I guess we'll just run on and attack them. Like, this fire isn't gonna damage us that much. I kinda thought this stuff was like lava that would really hurt us. And while it does hurt us a bit... God, would you stop casting? You stupid thing. Ugh, okay. Stab, there we go. Now at least it has to... Oh, apparently it doesn't have to chase us. Alright, well this thing's gonna... gonna have to die. There we go. I'm gonna get off the lava. Stop taking damage. So I guess we... I guess we got the one quest complete. We'll just wrap up this other one and then go turn them in. Um, I guess we, I guess it's possible to just get lucky and find that spot right off the bat, or if you know that is the one, then, you know, you could just do that instead of having to worry about searching for them. Alright, we got some Fists of Fury. She burst this guy. I'm gonna reflect some damage back at him. Go. Kick, kick. There we go. Fortunately, they got a pretty good drop rate on Ungoro Ash. So, you might think that this entire pile of mountain would be made of ash, and therefore you could simply pick up a bunch of Ungoro Ash, but uh, apparently you would be wrong if you thought that, and uh, you can't do that. So. Not enough energy. Alrighty. Killing blow, good. Let's go ahead and get one more. We should be able to get the ash we need. And get at it. Haul ash back to camp. And killing blow, nice. All right, so we're gonna avoid the uh, avoid the fire elementals, avoid these Dimetrodon things or whatever they are. Oh, hey, it's a blood petal lasher. This is one of the things we gotta kill for that other quest that I guess really is like all over the place. I'm gonna hit it with Chi Burst just to pull some damage off of us or you know, heal us. Rather. And... There we go. Oh, this is interesting. A Primal Ooze. A level 50 aberration. Pretty... pretty ugly guy, but, uh... neat nonetheless. If, um... if memory serves, a bunch of those ooze-type creatures used to carry a small non-combat pet in a bag. Every now and then when you got the bag you would get the non-combat pet and it would have um, or you would be able to get the pet and it was neat. That's it. Okay. Uh, we got a quest to go kill Blaze Runner. We'll definitely do that. And we need to just grab this quest out here. Scraps of rotting meat. Okay. All right. Well, we will do these. Oh, talk to this person. Okay. Find signs of rainbow. All right. Well, all of this we can work on next time. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you. And hopefully, you will look forward to watching the next episode. So, bye.